We're on the west side of the house now. You may recognize this spot, but you can see the patchy grass here. So, year, was it a year ago or year before last, there were two four-foot trenches dug right on either side of this giant juniper tree that has the funny face on it. I think that's there from the previous owners, but I'm gonna leave it. Kind of like whimsy, kind of like it. Anyway, um, so I haven't had a chance to come out here and reseed this. And the plan is, since this is such a narrow walkway, we would like to eventually take the walkway out, make a nice wider, maybe a curved one in this area, brick pathway to match the other one. We kind of want to start in with the same kind of material with all of our pathways. Anyway, that'll eliminate probably all the grass so that this whole area can be plantable. Um, but in the meantime, it's not a big deal just to throw a little bit of grass seed down to make this look nicer. So this is the grass I'm using. It's Creeping Red Fescue. We sell it in bulk down at the garden center, my parents do. Um, and it's good a good grass for shadier areas. Um, the other grass that we use a lot in our area, and I know it depends depending on the region you're in, what the most popular is, because some grasses just don't do well in cooler areas and some don't don't do as well in warm areas. So our most popular grass is a mix of Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye. It's a beautiful, beautiful lawn, um, nice and deep green. The other one we use a lot of is called RTF fescue. Um, it's also a thin bladed grass, but it's a little bit more drought tolerant and can take more activity uh, in case you have a lot of dogs or kids. And then if you have shade, red creeping fescue is what you wanna go with, which is what this area is. And I'm hoping it blends okay with the rest. I have no idea what's here right now. It could be the lawn mix, which is the Kentucky Kentucky blue perennial rye. Um, <clears throat> so it'll be green. At least it won't be patchy brown dirt. So here is my plan of attack. I am going to use this little hand cultivator tool right here just to kind of rough up the soil a bit because it's a little bit compacted from where it was worked and worked on and stepped on a lot. Uh, when I do that, I'm gonna add in a little bit of compost just to refresh the soil. Then I'll put my grass seed on and I'm gonna put it on thick. And then the tiniest layer of compost on top of the seed. Uh, and then I'll water it all in. And then we'll go in with Harvest Guard, which is this lovely material. I actually use it a lot. It allows light to go through. It allows moisture to penetrate, but it will keep the surface from drying out so fast. And the wind in our area, this is the west, it comes just barreling through here. So this area would dry out super fast if I didn't use this. And it's really important, once you get that grass seed wet, you have to keep it moist until that seed germinates. Because what happens is you get your seed down, you uh, water it in, it's nice and warm out now, so that seed will start to swell and it'll open at one point. That's called the point of germination. That's where the grass will come out. Um, if that grass seed dries out, it will dry up and pinch off that point of germination and then your seed is no longer viable. So it's just so important to keep your seeds wet. That's why I like to use the harvest guard to kind of extend the amount of time um, between me needing to come out here and make sure it's moist. But once it's warm enough, like if you wait until a certain point of the spring, the grass seed is so fast at coming up, you only really have to be out here maybe five to seven days making sure that it stays moist and then you can extend the amount of time even more. Compost layer is done, so now we'll start in with the grass seed, and this is what it looks like right here. One pound of this covers 250 square feet, which is way more than I need, but I am gonna seed it pretty thick. So I just go in with my hand like this, and I'm just gonna do a nice thick layer over all the areas I just cultivated. All right, you can see that I went in nice and thick with the grass seed, but I didn't even go through half of this bag. I have a ton left. But grass seed keeps forever as long as you keep it dry. Um, and you don't have to necessarily go in and cultivate it and add compost if you don't want to. Grass seed's pretty resilient. You can go in even just like this and just sprinkle grass if you've got some patchiness, just like this. But keep in mind that the only grass seed that will do well or make it is grass that makes contact with the soil. So after you do that, you know, just go in with your hand and kind of 
make sure that you've knocked any grass seeds off of the blades of grass so that they've gone down to the soil surface there. So at this point, people have different uh, methods on the way they like to cover it. Some people just kind of leave it or just lightly rake it in even with their fingers or a rake, like a real flexible tined rake. Um, some people will go in with a layer of straw, which I think is a total mess, I don't do that. Um, peat moss is also really good if you do a really fine layer. I'm just gonna go in with my same compost and just do a super light layer right on top of the seed and then I'll water it in. Um, and then we'll go in with our harvest guard then and tack it down. And I don't think I showed you this part, but I'll tack it down with um, landscape staples. The wind's picking up and blowing hair in my mouth. <laughs> Anyway, so landscape staples will, will work really nicely. And then once the grass is up pretty good, I'll take the fabric off and then just put a few flags around this area so that nobody walks on it until, usually we like to have it up um, and mowed three times before I kind of consider it ready for fertilizer and or walking, or a lot of walking anyway. This is what it's gonna look like for about the next five to seven days or so, I imagine. You can see the breeze is picking up a little bit, but it will help quite a bit. And I might come in with more landscape staples. I did them about every, I don't know, 18 inches or so, but I might have to come in and do a little bit more, especially on this side, depending on how much wind we get. And then here's the label for this cloth. I thought it might be helpful to see in case you guys wanna look for something like this. Uh, but it's called Harvest Guard and it actually shows a picture of using it for seed germination of grass instead of straw. Um, but I also use it a lot for frost protection. I always keep um, pieces of this actually in the house so that if it gets cold one night, I can run out and cover anything that needs to be covered. Um, anyway, it's super versatile stuff. So that's pretty much it for today's projects. That's all I really wanted to get done outside today other than my normal watering stuff, which really isn't that much yet. It's not very hot yet, so things don't need it every single day. But I do have some trees and containers still sitting over on the west side of our house. We're waiting until the pathway is all done and then we will start with our planting and we've got a ton of plants already here and a bunch of plants for what we're gonna be doing on that side. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope it was an interesting video or maybe even helpful to those of you guys who are maybe dealing with a hedge issue or you're getting ready to plant grass. So thanks so much you guys. We'll see you in the next one, bye.